Folks, a Wall Street investor owns the house behind me that's currently for sale and they are dramatically cutting the price. And this is the sign of the investor sell-off that I've been warning you guys about over the last year. Well, it is happening because the owner of that house behind me here in Houston is American Homes for Rent, the second largest publicly traded Wall Street landlord in America. They put that house on the market for sale in June and it still hasn't sold. And more and more, when we look around America in cities like Phoenix, Dallas, Atlanta, and even now in Florida, these Wall Street investors are selling. Because what's ultimately very scary is these investors in certain neighborhoods around America bought as many as 50% of the homes that were sold over the last couple years. You can see that there are zip codes where the investors purchased over half of the home. So what does that mean when the investors start to sell? Well, it means that the inventory on the market's gonna explode. Like in this zip code here in Houston, number of homes for sale have surged up to 230, which is almost three times higher than the low that we experienced during the pandemic. And so if you see the inventory, folks, in your city and zip code for sale, if you see that inventory spike, which is data you can access on Reventure app for free, that's a signal that your market could be in the crosshairs of a housing crash into 2024. And ultimately this housing downturn is becoming much more obvious to everyone over the last month or two. With mortgage rates near 8% combined with still near record high home prices, the affordability in the US housing market's the worst it's been in 40 years. Home buyers simply have no shot at affording a house in this market, which is why the home buyer demand continues to tank. And this tanking home buyer demand, it's finally starting to get the attention of sellers on the US housing market, with Redfin recently reporting that price cuts on the housing market have now reached their highest level on record. More and more, you go around neighborhoods like this and you're seeing sellers slash the price because they are starting to understand what we're dealing with here. We're dealing with the largest housing bubble of all time. And when I say largest housing bubble of all time, that's not my opinion. That's a fact. When you look at home prices adjusted for inflation, they're at the highest level on record today. They're down a little bit from where they were in 2022, but they're still above where they were in 06, home prices adjusted for inflation. When you look at home prices adjusted for income, we are also in a record bubble today. So if we're in the biggest housing bubble of all time, and then the home buyer demand has collapsed, and now the investors are selling, what's that gonna do to prices? Well, it's gonna cause prices to collapse. But of course, we're not seeing these price declines everywhere in America all at once. There's certain housing markets which are still holding strong. These housing markets are primarily located in the Northeast and Midwest. That's where prices are still flat or still going up. But if you look at the pandemic boomtown areas, that's where the prices are really starting to drop. For instance, I was just in Austin, Texas two days ago, and I found a house in Austin where the seller cut the price, get this everyone, the seller cut the price by 24%. They cut the price from 425 down to 325, and the house is still sitting on the market. Like two months later, the house is still sitting on the market. One of you just emailed me a listing from Idaho in a town called Coeur d'Alene up in Idaho. It's a place that a lot of people from California and Washington moved to during the pandemic. Well, the prices there are now going down. This listing, the owners cut the price from 1.4 million down to 800,000 a 45% price cut. But the reality is, even with these price cuts, the affordability levels are still very poor in the housing market. The percentage of income that a home buyer in Idaho needs to spend to buy a house is nearly 50%. 50% of their household income would need to go to their mortgage taxes and insurance in order to be able to buy a house. And clearly, that's not sustainable. And it's the investors who kind of see this coming at this point, which is why they're starting to sell. And what's crazy is that these Wall Street investors aren't even trying to hide the fact that they're starting to sell homes now. Because if you go to the most recent earnings call from Invitation Homes, who's the largest Wall Street landlord in America, Invitation Homes owns over 80,000 homes. They're the biggest single family homeowner. They were spun out of Blackstone. Well, on their most recent earnings call, their CFO basically said like, yeah, 
we're thinking of selling homes right now because we can sell assets or houses at a 4% cap rate, put the cash in the bank and then earn 5.35% in a CD or a treasury. So we don't need to have an immediate sort of capital redeployment opportunity in order to sell. We can just basically park the cash. And in particular, what they're trying to do is have as much dry powder on hand as possible. And the reason I think these Wall Street investors want as much dry powder on hand as possible is because they want to be buyers once the crash gets really bad, once home prices go down 20, 30, 40% in some of these zip codes, uh, it's gonna make sense for these Wall Street investors to buy, which is why they're starting to sell some of their assets so they can stack their cash, which is what I think you guys should be doing out there if you're a home buyer or investor. I'm not a financial advisor by any means, but in this environment, it makes sense to hold cash. Because if we look at the one year US Treasury yield, everyone, that's up to 5.4%, meaning if you were to buy a one year US Treasury from the government, you're getting a 5.4% annual return, which is way higher than it was over the last decade. And this is essentially more or less the return for holding cash right now. There's also CDs you can find for 5.4%. So that's a pretty decent return you can get for holding cash, especially in comparison to the rental profit or cap rate in America for rental properties, that's only 4.6%. So the fact that your return on holding cash is higher than the rental profit means that investors are likely to start selling. This is exactly actually what the CFO of Invitation Homes was alluding to. And make no mistake, folks, we're in the beginning of this investor sell off. We're only starting to see some of these bigger investors sell their properties and it's to be determined just how big the investor sell off gets. That's something I'm going to be watching into 2024. It's one of the reasons why you should make sure you're a subscriber to this channel. So I'll be tracking this in real time. But I think what concerns me for the housing market is that only very few investors need to sell for there to be a wave of inventory in a crash in prices. Because according to data from Adam Data Solutions, there's 23.6 trillion investment properties in America, 23.6 trillion homes and condos owned by real estate investors. That's 24% of all the houses in America. There's 100 million homes. So if only like 5% of those investors sell of the 24 million, that would be over 1 million homes onto the market, which would double the current inventory levels. So that's the thing to understand everyone, is that only a very small share of investors need to sell for there to be a wave of inventory. And all the way, these investors, they think that the housing market is overvalued. The Wall Street Journal just had an article about this, how Wall Street investors think the housing market is overvalued. They look at the home prices in comparison to incomes and rents, and they realize really it's, it doesn't make sense to buy, it doesn't make sense to hold even. In fact, actually among big Wall Street institutional investors, the last quarter was their lowest percentage of home purchases in the last decade, everyone. And so very important for you guys to understand this, that the investors are out on the housing market because I still look in the comment section sometimes and I see people say in the comment section of my videos like oh the, the investors the cash buyers are all just snapping up homes like that's not happening anymore folks and really this is going to be the question everyone for you and these Wall Street investors is what happens when prices go down enough like when will be the point in time that prices go down enough to attract buyers back into the market? That's the key question, because there will be a point in time where, where that happens. Maybe prices go down 30% in a neighborhood like this. Maybe prices go down 40% or maybe they go down 20% or maybe in some neighborhoods there's only a 10% decline that gets the buyers back in. But there's definitely a clearing price, what I call a fair value home price for every neighborhood in every county and metro in America where the buyers will come back in. And one of the great things uh, that you can do as a home buyer and investor is research how overvalued home prices are in your housing market. And that's a data point that I actually have available on ReVenture app. It's called overvaluation percentage. And the way that we calculate overvaluation percentage is we say, what's the home value today versus what the fair home value is based on historical fundamentals related to income. Specifically, what's the home value to income ratio today compared to the long-term norm? If the home value to income ratio is way higher than the long-term norm, you know that's an overvalued market. And there are some places here in Houston around where I am right now where the overvaluation rates are 30%. 35%. And so that says to me, if you're in a market with heavy overvaluation, price declines have a long way to go 
before we get to a level where the local buyer can afford a home before the investor thinks it makes sense to get back in. And right now when I look around America at this overvaluation rate, I see the most overvalued housing markets are disproportionately in two locations. One is the Mountain West area of America. I'm talking states like Arizona, Utah, Idaho, Montana. We got a lot of overvaluation there. We got a lot of room for prices to drop in those areas before the locals can afford uh, the homes, especially with mortgage rates of seven to eight percent. Additionally, we got a lot of overvaluation in the Southeast. I'm talking states like Tennessee, Georgia and Florida. Home prices are 30 percent overvalued in those markets. There's a lot of room for prices to fall in those locations. But at the other end of the spectrum, in a state like Illinois, or Connecticut or New Jersey, home prices are only five to 10% overvalued. So those markets are more of a, what I call correction markets. They're not really crash markets. And you know, folks, another thing I've noticed in my trip here uh, in Texas over the last week, you guys are gonna see lots of shorts and reels of me being here in Texas soon, is that despite all these headwinds, right, with you know the inventory increasing and the prices starting to go down and the investors now selling, we're still seeing the builders go nuts in states like Texas, everyone. Like in Dallas, for instance, the builders still pulled 64,000 permits over the last 12 months. I went to a home building site in Fort Worth where I was like, oh my goodness, I've never seen so many homes under construction. Uh, the builder there was DR Horton. They're getting ready to dump hundreds of homes onto the Fort Worth housing market. And so I say to myself, what's that gonna do to home prices and rents in 2024 with these builders in some markets still really going? going for it like in texas and alabama and florida like a lot of builders are still churning and burning and uh overall actually in america right now between houses and apartments there's nearly two million either under construction or permitted and ready to be built it's also gonna be good for the rental market everyone because we're still also seeing a huge amount of new apartment buildings being delivered and being developed which is going to push rental rates down further and in fact declining rents is one of the other reasons why some of these investors are selling one of the reasons why you know that investor down the street here american homes for rent they sold it because they had to cut the rent and they couldn't get the rent they needed to make it worthwhile and at the same time that the rents are going down everyone the costs of operating the rentals are going up property taxes here in texas they've spiked Insurance costs all around America are surging out of control. Wow, my hair is getting pretty wet, I apologize. I was just reading an article about how insurance costs in the state of Florida have doubled. The cost of insurance has gone from 3,200 to over 6,000 a year, which makes being a landlord right now really tough, everyone. Your property taxes, your insurance is going up while the rents in many markets are going down, while the interest rates have surged back up to the highest level in two decades. It's a cocktail that signals we are likely to see more investors sell their homes over the next year, something that could push home prices down by a lot, especially in heavily overvalued markets. If you want to find the markets and the zip codes that are most overvalued, go to Reventure app, www.reventure.app, where you can access free housing market data for every zip code in America. Now the overvaluation rate, that's a premium data point that you'll need to pay $39 a month for or $3.99 a year. In addition, you get access to another 20 premium data points on the housing market, including price cut percentage, days on the market, and cap rate information is really going to help you as a home buyer and investor make a better decision. So go to Reventure app right now, www.reventure.app and create an account.